Good morning. I'll tell you what, it's a drag to be here at the way the, at the west end of the eastern time zone. The sun rises even much later than in Philadelphia. Walk over here in the dark. Um, my name is Walter McDougall. I am the co-director of the FPRI History Institute. And on behalf of our president, Alan Luxenberg, uh, I'm privileged to welcome uh, all of you to the latest in our series of teachers' conferences. Uh, by Paul Dickler's count, this is number 43. So we must be doing something right. And I hope that um, we can uh, demonstrate to you over the next very intense but exhilarating 29 hours uh, what we do right. Um, it's also our, my privilege to introduce this conference because of the world-class quality of the scholars that we assemble to fulfill well, what we really consider to be the FPRI brand, which is not to press a particular political or ideological agenda, but rather to provide the deep historical, geographical, and cultural contexts for uh, pressing current events. It's also a privilege for me uh, to welcome our audience, our self-selected audience of teachers. Because speaking as a college professor who inherits your graduates in my classrooms, and as a high school parent myself, I honor your calling and I thank you for your devotion. I also want to thank our trustee, FPRI uh, trustee Robert Fox, for his support of this conference, certainly our hosts, Mr. Bullock of the John Heinz History Center, and I think we've all been very impressed by our first glimpses of this facility, uh, and Dr. Sokol of the Pittsburgh World Affairs Council. I thank FPRI's own excellent staff, especially Tally Helfont, who is the head of our Middle Eastern program and is the architect of this outstanding uh, weekend. Tally regrets her absence today, but she has a joyous excuse. She's about eight and a half months pregnant with her first child. <clears throat> so our, we're, our thoughts are with you, Tally. <clears throat> Iran, or Persia, as it was known to history until the 20th century, is our subject. How much do Americans really know <clears throat> about that country today. It occurred to me to think back to my youth and recall what I grew up knowing about Iran. My parents were highly educated, interested in the world, subscribed to the National Geographic. They chose to live <clears throat> in one of the best school districts in the nation for me and my brothers, New Trier Township, Illinois. Apologies to the teachers from Deerfield and Morton I know we have here today. Uh, and as a boy, I loved geography, and I collected atlases and children's history books. So I expect I probably knew more about foreign countries than most kids did back in the 50s and early 60s. And yet, what did I know about Iran? Well, I knew its basic geography and climate. I knew it was the seat of ancient empires. I knew it was the cradle of a religion called Zoroastrianism. I learned at some point, of course, that the Emperor Cyrus had permitted the Israelites who were captive in Babylon to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls and temple. I learned also of the Greek-Persian wars, the invasions of Greece by uh, Darius uh, and the Persians, related by Herodotus, who contrasted the oriental despotism of the Persian Empire with the heroic, self-governing Greek city-states. And of course, I learned of the subsequent uh, a Greek invasion of Persia. They got, their, uh, they got their licks in under Alexander the Great. Finally, I knew that Persia had fallen to the Arab onslaught in the seventh century and become Muslim, or as we school children said in the 1950s, Mohammedan. But I blush to confess, that's about all I knew, despite my love for geography and fine education. In short, <clears throat> I grew up imagining Persia as an ancient <clears throat> rather than a living civilization, noteworthy only for the roles it played in the origins of Western civilization, Jerusalem, Athens. I'm sure I never encountered the term Shiite before the Iran hostage crisis of 1979, 
and I dare say, neither did two other Americans born the same year as I, Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. How much did Clinton really know about, oh, Somalia, or Bush about Iraq before they occupied those countries? <clears throat> Too often the cynic Ambrose Bierce is right. War, he wrote, is nature's way of teaching Americans geography. But I rediscovered something amazing while recalling my childhood education. I remembered that one of my most delightful and revealing windows on the world had been my Uncle Scrooge comic books. And I seem to recall that one had taken place in Persia. I found it. I found the, the Uncle Scrooge story, and I'll give you all the URL so you can share it with your students. And I was right about what it had to teach. For this is how it begins. Uncle Scrooge is on a tour of his faraway oil pipelines. He and his nephews camp beside an ancient caravan trail in the foothills of one-time Persia. Either Huey, Dewey, or Louie, you can't tell them apart, says, this country is a bleak desert. Was it always like this, Uncle Scrooge? To which Scrooge replies, not likely, boys. It once supported many cities with thousands of people. Donald adds, you've read about this land in the tales of the Arabian Nights, kids. It was Plentyville with milk and honey. Golly, says Huey, there must have been fertile fields, groves of trees, and rain. What happened to the climate, Uncle Scrooge? To which Scrooge replies, nobody knows. Nobody knows much about Persia. It's a land of mystery, boys, a place in which you should never believe more than half of what you see and still less of what you hear. Whoa! So it was that Carl Barks, that Walt Disney genius who drew the duck stories, tried to teach kids like me in 1961 the subject of our first presentation today what every American needs to know about Iran. I have heard the speaker, Amin Tarzi, before, and I predict that you are about to be fascinated, entertained, and persuaded that Uncle Scrooge gave good advice about Persia. All you have to do, of course, is figure out which half to believe of what you see and hear. <clears throat> 